What's up guys, Erroneous here, and in this video, I beat this faction with no reviver and no legendary. Let's get into it. So, the faction is Sacred Order. I beat it the other day, and I'm super pumped. First, I'm gonna go over all the champions that I used. After I go over all the champions, then I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the runs that I took. So first, I'm gonna show you the champions I used in Sacred Order. And again, no legendaries, and I even used a rare. One of my favorite rares in the game. You guys might know that rare uh, just by looking, and that is Draconis. So Draconis, I think, is a really good champion. He's severely underrated. Uh, I did rate him fairly well. I mean, 5-star in Faction Wars, 4-star in Campaign, 4-star in the Demon Lord because he has the shield. Dragon Slayer, 5-star for people that are trying to progress in the game. Of course, 5-star in Minotaurs. In defense, I only gave him a 4-star uh, for Arena. If you can put really high resistance on him, he might be decent, but you have to put really good gear on him to put him in Arena. Uh, he could do pretty good in Tag Team. Uh, I, I wouldn't say he's like insane, but he can be annoying with those shields. Now, here's the gear set that I have on him. I have all speed sets. So for my boots, I put HP percentage with speed. The chest is HP percentage. There's no speed. I wish there was speed on it to make him even faster. But HP percentage is where you need to go. Then I put crit damage on the gauntlets because with his damage, as it scales higher, he heals your team more based on his skills. I put uh, speed on here with max glyph, which is nice. Triple crit rate here on a speed helmet. And then crit damage, crit rate, accuracy I don't need. I wish there was speed. Um, eventually when I get a better gear set or gear piece for this set I will change it out and add a new one and then I got uh, HP with a triple roll here on HP percentage crit damage with resistance as much as I can get HP with speed and HP decent banner not that great all of this stuff is five star gear besides the chest plate so there's a lot of room for improvement to show you his show you his total stats he has 65,000 HP, and with the new Faction Guardians, his HP went up a little bit further by 1,700, which is nice. 186 speed, 60% crit rate. I wish it was 100%, so he's hitting crits every time. Um, 192 crit damage. Again, there's room for improvement in this build. And then his heavy hitting ability, Order of Mercy, heals by 20% of the damage inflicted. So when he's hitting 60k damage, he's healing by about 15,000 or more for HP for one of your champions with the lowest HP and removes all debuffs from that ally with the lowest HP which is really cool. I did put masteries on him, uh, full masteries in War Master and then I went down with lasting gifts on the right side on the left side here. Chance to extend any buff cast by this champion for one turn so when he places those shields um, I made it so it goes on a three turn cooldown. Uh, also good for Scarab boss, so if you use him in Scarab, I do suggest using Lasting Gifts to extend the shields on that Scarab boss. The next champion I have on the list, Phoenix. So Phoenix is a very good champion. He doesn't have full masteries, but I did put damage masteries on him. Phoenix is good paired with Talia here, and when he does the Stern Partner, it decreases the bomb debuff detonation countdown by one turn when Talia is on the same team, which is good against those waves. And places a block buffs and block active skills, so it's really good against like unkillables, block those buffs, good against Valkyries, block the buffs as well. And all I did was change up his gear set to a stun set, and he works really well uh, because on his A1, he also has a put down ability where it blocks revive and that's huge especially on people that you don't want to get revived anymore especially against the boss because the boss tends to put sleeps on himself but revives the the two ads that are next to him and so phoenix can go in there and just block revive the ad which is massive places an extra hit on the target if they have any debuffs 
And then of course there it is, the block revive, which is really nice. He also has the slow speed decrease speed, which is a 60% chance of placing a 60% decrease defense, 30% chance to place a decrease speed for two turns, and the damage does scale up a little bit more. It, he does hit pretty hard with this ability. I use this ability mainly on the boss to decrease the boss's speed, and then you can book it down to four turns, but mine was on a six turn. This one here, Stern Partner, you could book it down to four, but mine was on a five turn. And then you can scale up his damage here by 20% more, which is nice. The next champion is Deacon Armstrong. So Deacon Armstrong is an exceptional champion. This guy was a carry on the team because he helps speed boost and he has an aura of 19% in all battles. So definitely use this guy if you have him. And this team, I just kind of kept building them. I did end up building a Bushi as well. I'll get to him next. But this guy here, Deacon, has the time compression. It's not booked for me. If it's booked, then he's going to do so much better because he's going to constantly increase the turn meter of allies by 15% and decrease the turn meter of enemies by 15% and then grants an extra turn. And then that's super good on the boss as well. And then he does this ability with um, Sweeping Retribution, which places a decreased defense on all enemies for two turns. Now, this can go down to a three turn. And then I do have the Ma Mace of Contempt. So... This move can place a leech, which is huge against the boss. But again, I don't really have many books in him. I only have three books. Uh, as you guys know, books are very hard to come by. I am 100% free to play, so it's challenging to get books. So I've got to work with what I've got. Now, masteries here. I did try to go with a good amount of masteries. I went with delayed death, especially when he takes damage from adds against the boss, and then and against the waves, and then cycle of magic. A chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one turn at the start of each turn. So he's going to have a 5% chance to, to decrease the cooldown of that ability which ends up boosting our turn meter which is time compression and then uh, decreases the enemy's turn meter and increases our turn meter. So I also went with Evil Eye to decrease the turn meter by 20% with a single target skill and 5% with AoE against the boss. That's kind of really big, and especially against adds, especially those that place a block damage uh, buff or an unkillable buff, or against Valkyries who place those um, counterattacks. So I did end up upgrading his, his gear set fully, pretty much, besides the banner. And I put a, I think I put HP. So I put the HP banner on him because he was dying against the boss and has defense rolls, triple roll defense, which is nice. Just a four star speed stun set. I actually only have two um, speed stun set boots on my entire account. I don't know why I just don't get lucky with stun sets that are, that stun pieces that are really good. So for the glove, I put HP percentage, resistance on the chest plate, uh, speed on the boots, and then if I want to use him in Doom Tower, I can still keep this on and then run an accuracy lead if I needed to. And then of course, you know the rest, this perception set is really good. The next champion is Talia. Talia also has a stun set. So I went with a triple stun set and that's what allowed me to, to beat the boss. Uh, because basically I just needed to stun the waves and stun the adds that are helping the boss because the boss has a counterattack skill which basically can one shot you uh, any of your team uh, members so you have to be able to get the good RNG from the stun set and that's the way that I beat it now I'm not sure if you can beat it with very high speed and regen it's relentless you can try to use but I really think that the stun set is a very very good option against the waves and and really a good option against those adds as well you can also try life steal but again I think stun sets the way to go with perception now Talia she does have stats 186 speed 3400 uh, attack and okay crit damage, okay crit rate, just enough accuracy to land. She doesn't have that much health, but she has okay defense. Uh, crit damage on the gauntlet, defense on the chest, and speed on the boots. These are actually really good speed boots. Um, let's see here. I don't think I went over his total stats. 195 speed on Deacon, no damage. He's built for resistance and for accuracy, so he doesn't get any fears from the, from the boss. And he has high HP and decent defense, so he's not getting killed if for some reason the boss does do that team ally attack. 
Next champion, or last champion I have, is Sanguinea. Sanguinea is a very, very good champion. I do have two of Sanguinea, but I only needed to build one. You don't need to build both, um, but you probably could if you wanted to. I do have my Sanguinea, the fastest champion on the team. She's also built for Doom Tower, so I have her in okay gear. 250 accuracy, 282 resistance. Again, she's not going to get feared by this boss unless you get that 3% chance where you could get the fear. And she's built with speed 223, 2600 defense, 43k on the HP. I do have an HP ring, I believe. Oh no, defense ring on her. And then I have HP on the amulet, accuracy on the banner. They're not maxed, the uh, ring or the banner. And then all of her regular set artifact pieces are maxed. So speed on the boots, resistance on the chest, defense on the glove. And I'm looking for speed, HP, crit rate if I can get a little bit of it. If you can get a little bit of damage, awesome. But speed, accuracy, HP, and resistance is kind of what I'm looking for here. Now I did go ahead and go with the masteries to delay death and also with the evil eye again. You can kind of see where I'm going with the, the consistency and pattern on the support tree. So there's that. You don't need to max it out, but if I did want to do something different with her and instead of delay death, I could have easily went with the offense tree and went down to giant slayer to get that extra damage from her ability because her A1 does in fact hit three times and then each hit has a 20% chance of decreasing the duration of two random buffs on the target which is actually massive uh, and then she has the healing and block debuffs and then she has sacrificial lamb which is a 75% chance of transferring all debuffs from this champion to the target and removes all debuffs from all allies except this champion that's a very big ability she also has an aura and dupe towers of 55 uh, now, just to show you my Bushi, and I also built a second uh, Draconis just in case. I tried doing it with double Draconis because it wasn't working before, but then I realized, meh, I'm just going to go with all stun sets. Took stun sets off my other champions, and then boom, I won it. Um, so my Bushi here, I tried using him too because he has this cool ability with unbending. It revives this champion with 30% HP, places an unkillable buff on him for one turn, and then I also put him in... <laughs> you guessed it uh swift parry if you did guess it and resistance on the chest attack on the boots so he's got about 165 speed if i do upgrade him i'll try to go for as much speed as possible maybe i'll put an attack banner on there so he can do more damage he actually hits somewhat hard on his a3 or a2 but he doesn't really hit that hard on his a1 now the a1 does scale over time for every kill he gets i believe or every time he uses it. Damage inflicted increases each time the skill is used in battle, stacks up to four times. But I think he needs to be fully booked to have any type of like real damage on him. He does have a speed in, in arena, which is really nice. So if you wanted to use him in arena with high resistance, he would be great. Because you wouldn't be able to get debuffs on him, and hopefully you wouldn't be able to get the block buffs debuff. So he'll just revive and be super annoying, especially if you build him really fast. Um, again, his A2 here, this is his heavy hitting ability. He hits for about 40 to 60k, and I don't really have him built that strong, to be honest with you. 89% crit rate, 156% crit damage. I think he could hit over 100k on his A2. It's just that I don't have that gear set right now. The gear's not powerful enough. He's not all upgraded. I would actually love to utilize Bushi in Arena and see how well he can do in Arena. Um, I tried using Armager, but it just didn't work the way I wanted to, so I just did away with Armager and just kept the team I had, which was these five champions and we did fairly well. Definitely let me know down in the comments below how you guys did on Sacred Order and what teams you used. Again, I didn't use a single legendary champion and I did not use Cardinal as the reviver to beat Sacred Order, so it was just a little bit more challenging. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys the video clips and I hope you guys enjoy it. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can continue getting the videos like this uh, for future reference. Subscribe. Yeah, thank you. Take care.